Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat and welcome to the 2023 post-SONA discussions. After a successful State of the Nation address by President Marcos Jr., let us continue to dive deeper into his message as we tackle specific issues in our cluster panel discussions. Pag-usapan po natin ang napakahalagang usapin ng infrastructure development and connectivity. This is of course an essential cluster when we talk about a modern, progressive, and connected Philippines. Or as the President has introduced, ang bagong Pilipinas. With us this afternoon are members of the Infrastructure Development and Connectivity Cluster. Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan, Department of Public Works and Highways. <laughs> Secretary Arsenio M. Balisacan, National Economic Development Authority. <laughs> Secretary Ivan John Uy, Department of Information and, Te and Communications Technology. Secretary Jaime J. Bautista, Department of Transportation. Secretary Rafael Lotilia, Department of Energy. Secretary Jose Rezalino L. Acuzar, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Secretary Cristina Garcia Frasco, Department of Tourism. And Under Secretary Mercedita Sombilia, Department of Agriculture. Good afternoon, Cabinet Secretaries. Let's get started with our discussion on infrastructure development and connectivity. And of course, we shall start with Department of Public Works and Highways. Sir, yesterday was the sauna. Ang sinabi ng Presidente, hindi lamang natin ipinagpapatuloy ang mga nasimulan ng mga proyekto. Lalo pa nating pinapalawak. Kaya naman, ang isang daan na dalawang put tatlong proyekto dito sa ating Build Better More program ay bago as of June this year. We have constructed, maintained, and upgraded more than 4,000 kilometers of roads and around 500 bridges across the country. Pakikwento po sa ating mga kababayan ang mga naglalakihang proyekto na naipatupad ninyo ngayong taon, ng karaang taon. Maraming maraming salamat po and good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Um, well, we are very happy that the President uh, eh, binanggit niya kung ano yung nagawa namin for uh, 2023. Uh, I mean, so far, uh, from July 2022 to May 2023 po yon. Simula pa lang yun po. Kasi that's only about 4,000 uh, kilometers that we have maintained, upgraded, and uh, constructed in the roads and uh, about uh, 900, uh, 497 bridges, actually. Um, well, we have to understand that uh, we uh, only uh, came in about July last year. And, uh, well, of course, the momentum is now gaining, actually, yung pinapaspasan na po namin dito with, with the approval of uh, the flagship projects uh, and uh, yung medium-term uh, medium development plan. So, nakalaid out na lahat, lahat yung plano. So, uh, the Department of Public Works and Highways will be on a fast mode starting this, uh, I mean, con continue to be on a fast mode now. Uh, marami po kaming uh, mga malalaking projects, as the President has mentioned uh, ye uh, yesterday in his SONA speech, na kailangan ho natin yung mga connectivity, uh, uh, kailangan ho natin i-address yung traffic uh, congestions, kasi... Traffic congestion is one of the main problems that we have now in our trunk lines, especially itong kwa natin sa uh, mga national roads natin, eh siyempre nagkaroon na ho ng marami na hong activities, economic activities, population growth, uh, vehicles, marami na po. So we have to address this because uh, sa ngayon po actually the Philippines uh, is the most expensive, has the most expensive quantum uh, transport goods and services. So this is one of the priority areas. Ngayon po, um, I'll just uh, make mention of uh, some of the major projects that the President has mentioned. Kagaya po nito yung connectivity natin, we are going to uh, start probably the construction of a major, major uh, project. Actually, this is the uh, Cavite to uh, Bataan interlink bridge. 
This is going to be a 32-kilometer bay bridge, and it will be the second longest bridge in the world. Kaya malaki po itong proyekto ito, but uh, we're now in the process of finalizing our yung mga financing agreements namin with the Asian Development Bank. So we are hoping that by next year, we can have some start on this project. Nabanggit din po si ni Presidente that we have also to interconnect some of the islands, major islands in the country. Ito po yung, ito po yung we, are have, we are going to interconnect actually Panay. Panay Island, Guimaras, and Negros. This is, uh, well, the total length of the, uh, the project will be about 37 kilometers, pero dalawa hong segment yan. No? And uh, again, there again, this is going to be a major undertaking of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Um, uh, Inaayos na rin po namin with, uh, of course, yung, uh, with the assistance of the National Economic Development Authority and the Department of Finance, yung financing agreements namin with the Korean Exim Bank. So again, yung detail engineering po nito is, uh, uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be carried out in a short while. And we also expect that by next year, baka ako makapagsimula rin kami nito. Marami pa kaming uh, uh, bridges, uh, so to speak. Uh, of course, uh, meron pa kaming isang bridge sa Cebu don kay uh, Secretary Frasco that will, the fourth bridge that will interconnect Mandawe to Lapu-Lapu. And uh, ganun din po yon Meron din po kaming, uh, Ipangil Bay Bridge is one of uh, the, uh, is a bridge project that was started by the last administration that we will be completing it by next year. This is going to be a bridge that will interconnect Lanao del Norte and Misamis Occidental that will cut travel along that uh, peninsula in a very short time. Marami po kami, I think uh, the other thing that I want to emphasize also is that actually one of the major projects that we want to uh, undertake is actually the uh, upgrading and rehabilitation of the Maharlika Highway from Cagayan all the way to Davao. Kasi marami na pong congested areas ng uh, Maharlika Highway and uh, this, uh, this is uh, impeding actually the travel. Uh, we want to uh, we want to uh, we want to convert the Maharlika Highway into a seamless uh, trunk line road, para dere dere lang po yung travel na, travel natin don. And there's going to be substantial uh, may malalaking projects pa don, like uh, for example we are planning to uh, undertake a uh, six kilometer tunnel dito sa Middleton Pass. Ay, malaki po yun. And then, of course, we will rehabilitate yung mga segments in Mindanao, yung uh, Surigao, ay, I mean, sa Agusan to Davao, and of course, dito sa may Samar area. Yun din dito sa, uh, from Samar to uh, Tacloban. Yun ang mga segments na malalaki po. And of course, uh, all the other roads that uh, we are talking about, marami po kasing uh, projects. Um, this year, we have a total budget yata of about uh, eight, 890 billion pesos. And we are hoping that uh, we will have the same investment uh, again next year. As the President says, we are going to uh, infuse uh, yung uh, infrastructure program by uh, 5 to 6 percent of GDP. So, malaking trabaho po yung ginagano pa na namin. Maraming salamat po for now. Thank you, Secretary Bonoan. Ang dami talagang proyekto. At babalikan namin kayo in a little while. Uh, of course, none of that would be possible without NEDA. <laughs> Secretary Balitsakan, who is right beside me. Ang sabi ng Pangulo, the underlying logic to our infrastructure development is economic efficiency. We are opening up all gateways to mobilize goods and services at less cost and in less time and ultimately to drive the economy. Would you please describe more the economic progress that's brought about by infrastructure projects, especially in the past year, recovering from the pandemic? Why are infra projects an essential driver of the economy? Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess uh, let's start with the uh, big picture. Um, construction represents about 12% of GDP last year. 
and about 5.5% uh, of that, uh, uh, percentage point of that is uh, from uh, 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 public construction, and the, 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 rem the remaining ones are private construction. Um, okay, uh, in all pub public discussions, uh, forums, and, uh, uh, and doing business in the Philippines, one of the foremost concerns raised is the poor quality, the lack of, uh, of infrastructure uh, uh, in our country. In relation to other uh, economies in our region, uh, so uh, uh, we can think of infrastructure development as the spinal cord of the economy. Uh, it, it, it's that essential, and we got, with with that uh, 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 with good infrastructure, you can uh, address all the major problems uh, that uh, that uh, uh, the business community. Uh, uh, often raised, uh, the uh, ease of doing business uh, will uh, uh, will uh, be facilitated, uh, will be promoted. The the cost, uh, in particular, of doing business in this country will be much reduced, uh, and as a result, investments will uh, will grow. And with uh, uh, more investment, you can have uh, more opportunities opened up for our pop, uh, population. In the son of the president, uh, he he, uh, he raised about uh, the expansion of employment, right, and the reaction of some people that we have uh, seen uh, uh, after that is, but where are the jobs? Uh, uh, of course, what uh, what uh, uh, this uh, trust to address the, this uh, basic constraints to investment is precisely to raise the quality of jobs. With investment, we'll be able to uh, uh, to, to uh, elevate the uh, opportunities of our uh, workers for higher quality, more remunerative jobs. And so, with rapid growth, uh, fueled partly by uh, by uh, infrastructure development, uh, we can uh, expand the economic pie. We can uh, in, uh, increase incomes. Uh, we can produce a lot of. Uh, uh, employment opportunities, and that will allow us to achieve what we, ca what we have called the inclusive growth. And with the inclusive growth, we, can, uh, we, we will be able to uh, reduce poverty to single-digit level, and that is in the uh, uh, Philippine Development uh, Plan for 2023 and 2028. That's the bigger picture, at least. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary Balisakan. Um, for, uh, we also just recently signed the Maharlika bill. It's uh, signed into law. How can the Maharlika fund be of help to our big ticket infrastructure projects? As we have said, and the president has mentioned in the SONA, the Maharlika fund is uh, another uh, avenue, another pillar for uh, raising uh, investments. Uh, uh, through the Maharlika, we, can, we could uh, channel uh, um, um, uh, low productivity or, 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 or government assets, uh, financial assets that are, uh, that are out there that are, are earning but are not as uh, high as what we, we could expect uh, otherwise. Uh, for example, in our estimates, uh, we, we, we find that uh, these uh, financial assets of, uh, of our, uh, some of our uh, public financial institutions are uh, earning uh, four or so uh, percent uh, returns, but uh, with uh, uh, ha uh, productive, uh, uh, highly remunerative, uh, high-impact projects like uh, the ones uh, by uh, our DOTR secretary and the PWH and even Department of Health, uh, uh, we could uh, raise that, those earnings to eight uh, percent, and uh, and so you could. Uh, you can imagine that you can you are expanding the uh, the, the uh, options for the future because the fund is, will expand, but at the same time you are able to uh, bring in more resources for high impact projects, uh, uh, and, and 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 that is I think uh, very important, uh, especially uh, when we become already a uh, 
uh, or we join the ranks of upper income, middle income countries no? by 2025, because by then we will lose our access to concessional, mm -hmm. concessional funds, concessional loans. No? Uh, and uh, that means that uh, we won't get any more soft loans from ADB or from World Bank, uh, but we'll be competing with uh, you know, market rate uh, uh, funds for our infrastructure. And so this is an additional uh, avenue for us to access the, uh, development funds. Okay, thank you, Secretary Balisakan. Now, uh, when we talk about physical connectivity, we also talk about uh, internet network connectivity, okay? So we have with us uh, uh, Department of Information and uh, Communications Technology, Sir, Secretary Ivan Uy. Ibinida ng Pangulo ang ating progress sa internet speed, sa global rankings. What did the ICT do to achieve this and what other internet infrastructure projects can we expect? What other wins in terms of connectivity have we achieved this year? Thank you, Daphne. Well, actually, uh, what has really pushed our um, digital infrastructure and digital connectivity was um, the ease of uh, doing business, no? Uh, in partnership with ARTA and with our uh, telco uh, private sector partners. Uh, we work on liberalizing and uh, making it easier for them to, do, to deploy their um, common tower um, infrastructure. And actually, the recent executive order that was signed by the president um, em emphasizes this. So because of the um, easier uh, lesser red tape in um, applying for all, all the permits and licenses in order to set up the common towers uh, all, over the, all over the country. It's now more economical and faster for all our telco partners to be able to deploy connectivity um, across the, the country. At the same time, uh, with the digital infrastructure, uh, we're seeing that uh, today, uh, more and more data are actually being generated. And as they all say, uh, data is the new oil uh, today. And uh, with all that data, we're, we're expecting an increase, a rapid increase in the capacity of the data centers. In fact, in the next two years, uh, we project at least a 500% increase in data center capacity within the country. At 500%. Why? Because um, the hyperscalers are really looking at the Philippines uh, being um, an ideal location for them to, to host it. And uh, once uh, these large data centers are deployed, a lot of the data will be stored there. Then what will now be the engine that will drive all this oil? It will be artificial intelligence. As we, uh, as we use uh, more AI, and in the business process outsourcing in um, many of our um, applications, that engine will now be fueled by all this data and we will be able to cater to our um, foreign clients um, in, the data, uh, in the business process uh, management outsourcing um, community. But at the same time, also uh, provide good data for governance because with our um, integrated eGov platforms, we will be integrating a lot of public services into that platform. And that will allow us to make data-driven decisions that will be focused um, and there will be no guesswork that, that uh, has been um, plaguing normally uh, government decisions because of the lack of uh, data and the right information to do so. So, so that's, that's what's in store, and that's what's been happening in the digital connectivity and digital infrastructure side. Thank you. So data to be used for policy making and, uh, and future projects. That's great. Let's move on to the transportation department. Sir, uh, the president said intermodal connectivity will be a primary consideration. Roads, bridges, and mass transport systems will be interconnected. This network will provide access and passage to vital and bustling economic markets, such as agriculture hubs, 
tourism sites and key business districts. Would you please expound on uh, more on these plans? Um, its direct benefits to the people? What are the challenges in its execution? Secretary Bautista. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Daphne, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. No? Uh, intermodal connectivity is uh, very important uh, for all uh, of us uh, who travel by uh, land, by air, by uh, sea, no? or by rail. No? And uh, the Department of Transportation uh, is uh, working uh, very hard to see to it that we implement all the programs uh, that we have planned. No? Uh, for the airport, uh, you know, there are uh, around 90 airports in the country, no? but uh, only 45 are uh, on commercial operations. No? And the Department of Transportation, uh, together with uh, its attached agencies, the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, <coughs> continue to upgrade the airports. No? Uh, we are uh, upgrading uh, airports of... Uh, for example, uh, the Bicol International Airport, uh, uh, the regional airports uh, in uh, Palawan, in uh, uh, Dipolog, no? and uh, all other small airports. No? So uh, uh, CAAP, uh, together with the OTR, continue to upgrade all these airports. No? But uh, one major project that uh, the Department of Transportation will implement this year is the modernization and upgrading of the Manila International Airport. No? Uh, the NEDA board uh, approved uh, uh, a few weeks ago uh, our proposal to have uh, a solicited uh, bidding so that uh, many uh, interest, interest, but interested parties can uh, participate in uh, the modernization of uh, the Manila International Airport. No? We're expecting that uh, by uh, early August, we will be able to publish the terms of reference so that we can invite prospective bidders. No? And uh, with that, we're hoping that uh, by uh, end of October or early November, we will be able to accept uh, proposals. No? And by the end of the year, uh, we can uh, already award the project to the winning bidder. And uh, a few months later, uh, after financial closing, uh, the concession agreement can uh, be uh, uh, started. No? So this is uh, one uh, project uh, for the airport that uh, we think uh, will be implemented soon. No? This will uh, result to uh, increase capacity of the Manila International Airport, no? considering that uh, this airport is already congested uh, with only a capacity of 32 million uh, passengers per year but uh, now handling uh, uh, more than 40 million. No? In fact, uh, uh, today uh, the airport is uh, now handling around 140,000 passengers a day compared with 115,000 uh, a year ago. No? So that's a big increase in uh, uh, the demand uh, and uh, increase in the number of passengers that pass through Metro Manila. So uh, we think that uh, this project is very important and uh, with the support of uh, uh, the other government agencies, we will be able to implement this project. No? Another uh, important project that uh, we are implementing are the rail sector projects. No? Uh, we have this North-South Commuter Railway, uh, is, which is a 147 kilometer railway from uh, uh, Clark Airport to Calamba, Laguna. And uh, we're hoping that uh, we should be able to complete this by uh, 2028. No? Uh, we have uh, awarded uh, almost all the contract packages. Uh, I think except for two contract packages, uh, all contract packages were already awarded. And uh, construction is uh, in full swing. No? Uh, we have also uh, started uh, the actual boring of uh, the tunnel for the Metro Manila subway. No? Uh, February 9, when the president uh, inaugurated the first operations of the uh, tunnel boring machine, no? uh, and we're expecting that uh, the tunnel from uh, Balinsuela to uh, Quirino Avenue will be completed by the end of the year. No? Uh, we're taking delivery of more tunnel boring machines, which will uh, operate uh, simultaneously 
so that I will be able to complete this project by uh, 2028. Uh, and uh, hope that uh, this will uh, again provide uh, additional uh, uh, service to our riding public. No? Uh, we're also expecting to complete uh, the extension of uh, LRT1, no? uh, five additional uh, stations from uh, Baclaran to Sukhat. Uh, we're expecting that uh, this will be completed by September of next year. Uh, this will uh, reduce travel time from uh, Baclaran to Sukhat to just 10 minutes, uh, from uh, 45 to 45 minutes to one hour. No? Uh, another uh, rail project that uh, we will complete in two years is uh, MRT-7. No? Uh, this is a uh, rail system from uh, North Avenue, EDSA, to uh, San Jose del Monte, uh, it will reduce travel time by one and a half hours. No? Because uh, right now, travel time uh, from that uh, place going to Manila is two hours. No? And uh, with the new train system, it will uh, be reduced to just 30 to 35 minutes. No? Uh, we are also in the process of uh, uh, finalizing the feasibility study for uh, new railways. No? Uh, the president mentioned about a 1,000 uh, kilometer railway in his uh, sauna, uh, and uh, we already have uh, the fund to uh, do the feasibility study for uh, the uh, rail system from Clark to Ilocos no? and uh, Clark to Cagayan, de Cagayan, uh, to Cagayan Valley. No? Uh, we also uh, have the fund to uh, to support the feasibility study for the Panay Railway and also for uh, the Northern Mindanao Railway from uh, uh, the airport to uh, the city of uh, Cagayan de Oro. No? Uh, we're also uh, in the process of uh, finalizing uh, the financing for uh, the Clark to Subic uh, Freight Railway. No? So. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, we will be able to uh, start working on this. No? Uh, on uh, the maritime sector, uh, we are uh, improving uh, many, many ports no? through uh, the Philippine Ports Authority. No? Uh, in uh, the road sector, we are in the process of uh, building more bike lanes no? uh, to support the active transport. Uh, we're also uh, in the process of finalizing uh, construction or uh, finalizing the project for the Tagig uh, uh, Integrated uh, Terminal Exchange, no? which is uh, similar to uh, PTEX that uh, we have here in Paranaque. No? Uh, there are uh, other uh, airport projects that uh, we will uh, start. No? Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we will be able to uh, have some of this completed uh, within the next few years. No? Bulacan Air Fort for one uh, is uh, very uh, promising. Uh, uh, we visited the site uh, a few months ago and uh, the land development is almost 70% complete. And uh, uh, we're hoping that uh, by next year, uh, San Miguel Corporation can start uh, constructing a uh, uh, passenger terminal building and uh, runway, runway. No? So uh, there are so, so many projects that uh, will work with uh, the PWH also about uh, tollways. No? And uh, uh, we will uh, work closely with them so that uh, we can uh, complete all these projects. Okay, I could see Secretary Garcia Frasco nodding a lot. We are getting very excited over these uh, 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 projects under your department, Secretary um, Bautista. So let me jump to, to you, Secretary uh, Frasco. You, uh, the Department of Tourism is uh, partnering with the DPWH and DOTR. Of course, you're all working together, all of government, and improving roads, railways, airports, and, and the like. Um, would you like to tell us more about this impact of this in our tourist destinations and uh, your plans for that? Thank you very much. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Ug sa tanan natong igsuunan sa Kabisayaan ug Mindanao, maayong adlaw. Love the Philippines. I'm smiling from ear to ear. 
because with all of the projects in infrastructure and transportation that have been lined up, implemented, or are, and are continuing under the Marcos administration, this is truly reflective of what our president articulated very early on last year. And that is that tourism is a priority. Applying not only a whole of government, but a whole of nation approach towards reviving this most promising sector. Because of the prioritization of the Marcos administration, especially in terms of strengthening the essential pillars of tourism development that include infrastructure and transportation, we have seen a robust growth in the industry post-pandemic. Last year, we uh, exceeded all of our targets in terms of international arrivals by nearly a million, uh, garnering in for the country over 1.87 trillion pesos in combined spending of international and domestic tourism, with over 102 million domestic trips having taken, been taken by our fellow Filipinos. All of this translated to over 5.35 million jobs for Filipinos, and if you multiply that by the average number of uh, members per family, that's over 25 million Filipinos that have benefited from tourism. Specific to infrastructure, through our continuing partnership with the DPWH, there have been over 158 kilometers of roads leading to tourist destinations that have been constructed and are ongoing. And we are very optimistic that in the coming year, investments in tourism roads will continue so that we can continue to expand countrywide development as far as tourism is concerned so we fulfill the president's vision that no one is left behind as far as the local government units to benefit from tourism development. We're also uh, very happy to note that uh, through our partnership with the Department of Transportation, wherein uh, the DOT, together with its attached agency, TIEZA, presented its proposals to the DOTR for the improvement of our gateways, uh, you can now readily see and feel the warmth of the Filipino love and the hospitality when you land in Naia Terminal 2, as there are Filipino-made furnitures, improvements in the interiors, plants, sulia panels, charging stations, and the like in this particular airport. This effort we hope to be able to expand as well in partnership with the DOTR in the Davao International Airport, as well as uh, the Cebu City Port and in many other gateways in the Philippines, recognizing that uh, our gate ways are the first and last impression of our tourists. With regard to uh, the secondary gateways of the country, we have also made efforts to uh, converge with fellow government agencies, especially in terms of resuming pre-pandemic flights and adding to more flights to our secondary destinations in order to encourage connectivity. And with this, we uh, are seeing additional flights to Clark International Airport so that we can fully maximize the capacity of this airport. Uh, of course, Cebu, which uh, has been awarded the best airport in Asia under the 5 million category, continues to grow in terms of uh, the number of flights going to other domestic destinations. We've also seen new flights uh, into Palawan, which uh, has been declared by a wanderlust in the UK as one of the most uh, desirable island in uh, the rest of the world. And so all of these investments that the Marcos administration has made in uh, infrastructure development and connectivity have uh, readily resulted in this uh, growth in the tourism sector that we can only see to grow further as uh, we are very optimistic in not only meeting but also exceeding our targets this year of 4.8 million international arrivals since as of this day we already have over 3.1 million international visitors having come into the Philippines translating to over 215 billion visitor receipts thus far. Thank you so much Secretary Garcia Frasco. Wow. We'll get back to you shortly. Uh, let's move on to energy, of course, Secretary Latilia. The president said renewable energy is the way forward. The government recently allowed full foreign ownership in renewable energy projects to boost foreign investment in the sector. Aside from this, what are the DOE's efforts to attract investments in the renewable energy sector, especially in streamlining the application for implementation of new energy projects? Thank you, Daphne. The, uh, <clears throat> the president has stressed the need to diversify our sources of 
power and energy. And renewable energy is the key because then this is indigenous and therefore readily available for us, not subject to the volatilities of the external market. The, uh, as, but as you know, the, uh, the power and energy sector in the Philippines is in private hands. And therefore, the role of government has been to, to support the initiatives of the private sector. And uh, uh, so far, the uh, department has approved uh, 126 service contracts in renew renewable energy service contracts in the one year of the Marcos administration. And this represents a potential of around 31,000 megawatts. Just for context, by 2028, the uh, peak demand of the Philippines will be at around 25,000 megawatts, up from our current 17,000 megawatts peak demand. And to be able to meet that demand, we will have to make available more than 8,000 uh, megawatts of new capacity. Under the vision of the president, 43% of that should at least be from renewable energy. But renewable energy, as you know, is site-specific. And therefore, connectivity is at the core of renewable energy. We've got to connect the source to the markets. And transmission is key. So we need to improve, for example, on the system impact studies. Because these have to be addressed up front rather than later. And the system impact studies, unfortunately, are, are rather delayed. Uh, a number of you in this sector have been uh, complaining of delays from one and a half to two years in the system impact study alone. So these are the things that we, we want to be able to, to address so that the RE developers will be able to focus on the rollout of their, of their projects. Uh, the other is, of course, the energy virtual one-stop shop which imposes the law which imposes timelines on the delivery of uh, permits or the approval of permits by the different agencies. And the executive secretary is, uh, is chairing this one. And so by the next meeting, for example, we will be looking at how the, uh, the uh, transmission concessionaire, the NGCP, is, uh, is going to specify the 60-day requirement for approval of just the system impact uh, studies. So all of these we need to, to uh, connect, and we will be, uh, we will be challenged by, by the needs, for example, of the, the transport sector, which uh, Secretary Bautista pointed out. Most of these land transports, for instance, will be electricity dependent. And of course, it's cleaner and more convenient for, for our uh, people. But then we need to be able to deliver that demand. And we are working with the private sector, and we commit ourselves to deliver on those. Thank you. Thank you. You have your work cut out for you, but you seem to be on the right track and uh, with all the uh, agencies helping each other. That's great. Now let's move on to human settlements and urban development. Secretary Acuzar, ibinida ng Pangulo kahapon sa SONA ang tagumpay ng ating pambansang pabahay para sa Pilipino Housing Program or 4PH. How is 4PH program going to be funded? Who are the beneficiaries of the 4PH program? And who should be identifying the beneficiaries? Gaano kaabot kaya ang pabahay mula sa 4PH program, sir? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yung pong programa po ng ating mahal na Pangulo na pambas ng pabahay para sa, para sa Pilipino, ito po ay pang, uh, pangkalahatan, hindi lang po pang mahirap. Ang una pong tinatarget nito ay yung mga uh, resettle, yung mga, ano po, yung mga urban poor. Kaya po mapapansin nyo na po ngayon at... Uh, Pakikisama na po yung mga urban poor sa aming mga, dip, uh, sa aming mga programa. Like, meron kaming gang ginagawa din na, na, na isang uh, projects dito po sa, here in, uh, in, uh, in uh, dito sa Lupang Arenda. Ang Lupang Arenda is one of the biggest slum area here in Metro Manila. So, ang program po ng, uh, uh, 
ng pambansang pabahay, pangkalahat ng ito. Kahit yung mga drivers, yung mga waiters, lahat po yan kasali. Hindi lang po yun ng uh, squatters, pero may mga big projects po yung uh, pambansang pabahay. Yung pondo po no, na pinagagamitan, the funds, are coming from the private sectors. Ang hiningi po lang namin dito is the funds for the interest subsidy. Pag, nag, pag kumuha po kami ng interest subsidy, kami po ay po, po, uh, kukuha ng pondo sa private sectors. Yung dati pong uh, traditional housing uh, program of the governments, getting the funds from the governments, hindi po kakayanan ng gobyerno. Hindi po matatapos ang backlog ng housing. Kasi po ang ginagamit po natin dito ay government funds. In, sa ibang basa po, ang gamit talaga private funds when it comes to housing. Pagka ang housing po ay nanggaling sa private funds, even in the banks, pag sa banks po nanggagaling ang pondo, ang simple lang po, ang developers uutang sa banko. Ang banko, ang developers magbebenta sa BDP series. Ang BDP series naman po, uutang rin sa banko. Ang, bank, ang BDP series naman po, magbabayad sa banko, sa developers. Ang developers magbabayad sa banko. By, di, by doing that, that systems, hindi po mawawala ang pondo. Ang, gagami, ang gawa lang po ng, ng gobyerno rito ay yung interest subsidy. Kasi the interest subsidy, instead of magbayad ng 6%, 1% na lang po. Pero, kung hindi pa rin kaya ng mga squatters, resettlement, sagrado hindi kukulang, kasi dati po yung bayad po ng 6% sa ordinary projects na ginagawa namin ngayon sa Dishud, is about 8 to 10,000. 10, With the interest subsidy and others, uh, uh, other uh, systems na ginagawa po namin, ay eh, bumaba pa po ng 2,000, 5 to 3,000. Kung hindi pa rin kaya, meron din po kaming systems na graduated amortization. So in other words, everything here in the, in the country kasali po sa housing program ng DISHUD. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Akuzar, for explaining the 4PH program. Very exciting po. Let's move on to Department of Agriculture, USEC uh, Sombilia. An additional 600 kilometers of farm-to-market roads have been built this past year in the various areas of the country. How has this helped our farmers and what other directives has the president uh, laid down to ensure easier, faster, and more comfortable transport of farm goods? Yes, thank you very much and good afternoon to all. Uh, actually, it's 662.67 kilometers of road, to be exact. And that is a combined uh, accomplishments of the regular programs of the Department of Agriculture, yung sa sugar or SRA natin, sa SIDA law, and of course, yung project na Philippine Rural Development Project. No? And in addition to that, meron din tayong nagawa na 670 lineal meters of bridges. Okay? Napaka-importante po ito na banggit na po yung connectivity na kailangan-kailangan natin, lalo na sa mga rural areas na talagang medyo malayo sa mga uh, 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 urban cities at sa mga consumers kung saan kailangan talaga yung produkto. No? So, to farmers, this would mean, you know, easier for them to transport their produce which will give them, you know, uh, encourage them to you know, diversify their production, uh, lalo na sa mga yung mga kailangan natin na perishable because it's going to be easier now to, you know, for these products to reach the consumers in the urban areas or in the cities or in the, even the town centers, no? And that will give a greater variety of food in the local markets, you know, for health reasons, no? So, uh, more diversified, uh, less cost in traveling, in, in, in uh, moving this uh, pro produce to the, to the market centers will mean, you know, greater uh, incomes to the farmers. No? So that's very one uh, uh, reason for the importance of really uh, putting up these farm-to-market roads. The second is that you know, the, it will connect you, them also to processing centers even to the ports for export goods na talagang exportable natin. So again, you know, that will, again, you know, uh, lead to, uh, result to, you know, higher income, uh, uh, greater business opportunities to the farmers, uh, more livelihood for them. 
because then you know agribusiness related industries can can you know can can uh, you know can grow and it means more employment also to the rural areas. So hindi lang po yung mga fisher, uh, farmers and fisher folks ang mabebenefisyuhan. Pati po yung mga tao na nakatira doon sa rural areas. Kasi it will be easier for them to access health services, other social services, at, you know, uh, faster time and lesser cost. So it really means, you know, a, a, the whole welfare of the society, you know, will be benefited by this uh, in, uh, enhanced connectivity. So kaya noong very first meetings ni President with the agriculture sector, with the Department of Agriculture, ang una niyang instruction is to come up with a farm to market network plan. And I think that was what was done and we already have that plan. It's going to be the master plan for all uh, farm to market routes that are going to be you know, uh, constructed in the next, uh, you know, hopefully, matatapos. Kasi ang kailangan pa, pa po natin farm to market routes is about 64,155 uh, kilometers. That's how, you know, uh, how much more uh, kilometers of uh, farm to market roads, you know, we need, you know, for the next. And gusto ni Presidente, tatapusin natin lahat yun. So it's going to be a big challenge. So in addition to, so meaning to say, yung farm to market roads tala for rural empowerment talaga, rural community empowerment. So without this talaga, magiging isolated ang mga iba nito. So I think, uh, you know, it's really very important. Aside from that, meron din pong pinapag ginagawa ngayon na yung tinatawag together with ADB, Philippine, um, let me just check, Philippine Food Chain Logistics Master Plan. So that will identify the specific interventions that are going to be needed to really, you know, uh, enhance the agriculture sector. Saan po itong mga logistics and facilities are going to be strategically uh, provided. At saka, saan po ta tayo kukuha ng investments, you know, to make all, all of these things happen. So, medyo talagang, you know, the, the president has been really looking at the agriculture sector. Talagang inaano niya na ang agriculture is still the backbone, one of the backbone of the, of the economy. So, yun. Uh, Thank you, Yusek Sombilia. Very important work you're doing there. Let's bring it back to the Public Works and Highways, Secretary Bonoan. Uh, considering the country's vulnerability to various forms of natural disasters such as flooding, what are the DPWH big ticket flood control projects that are nearing completion? And how is the DPWH ensuring the timely completion of these projects? Uh, well, uh, this is uh, another sector that uh, we are trying to uh, to face several challenges. Actually, the uh, flood control program of the department. This is having any president. I think uh, you have to construct now uh, flood control projects that are more uh, uh, resilient and sustainable uh, because of uh, climate changes and uh, things like this. So. Um, uh, technology will uh, tell us kung ano man naman yung pwede natin gagawin. But in the meantime, I think, uh, let me start uh, with some of the projects that we are undertaking. Kasi um, we, we will continue to uh, build uh, flood, control, pro, pro, flood control structures. But this will now be integrated in the water resource uh, management, uh, the, um, uh, water resource development uh, management principles. And... Uh, and uh, yung hindi na yung patchy patchy siguro yung gagawin namin dito because we'll address it on the river basin program para mas malaki yung lawak ng uh, masasakupan. No? And, uh, and I think uh, this will be more effective uh, in many areas uh, for flood control uh, in many parts of the country. No? There are many projects that uh, are ongoing right now. Uh, there are 18 major river basins in, in the country, and uh, uh, some of the biggest uh, river basins like Cagayan, Cagayan River Basin, uh, sa, um, dito sa Panay, and many, many more. In Metro Manila, let me just expound. Uh, in Metro Manila, kasi uh, siyempre binabaha ang Metro Manila. And for now, um, we will soon complete actually yung 
rehabilitation um, uh, pumping stations in Metro Manila. I think there are 20 of these that are being upgraded and rehabilitated pumping stations in Metro Manila. And we are constructing another 10, uh, 10 new uh, pumping stations in Metro Manila to uh, facilitate yung uh, uh, flood, uh, flood uh, uh, yung waters in Metro Manila. We are also constructing actually yung mga booster pumps dito sa mga um, uh, river ch uh, channels para mas mabilis yung pagpunta ng tubig papunta doon sa mga pumping stations. All this we expect that uh, I think in a very short time, I think uh, we're just about uh, to finish actually yung rehabilitation nga ng mga pumping stations. Um, but again, in Metro Manila, I think one of uh, the biggest challenge is actually solid waste uh, disposal. You know? And uh, we are coordinating with the Metropol Metropolitan Development Authority actually to uh, look into this. Kasi kahit na ano, ka-efficient din yung ano mo, kung maraming basura yung pumupunta sa'yo, then it will just impede the flow of the flow of water. So anything, this, uh, this is going to be a challenge uh, to uh, everybody. In the same manner as yung mga, kung din sa mga major river basins, uh, siyempre, uh, yung mga encroachments in the river basins, uh, yung mga structures and all this will have to be, well, relocated siguro and uh, and find out how we can best actually accommodate them so that uh, they would be free from, um, from yung uh, inundation. And uh, once we construct actually yung mga flood control measures namin, and uh, I think uh, it will be good. So thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you so much, Secretary Bono, and flood control and solid waste disposal, a lot of projects. Let's move on to Secretary Ivan Uy. Please tell us about the success of the Broadband ng Masa program. Well, the, the Broadband ng Masa program is a, is a comprehensive program that integrates our national broadband together with our free Wi-Fi project. And um, so with respect to the national broadband aspect, uh, we're actually already uh, been able to connect uh, Baler to... Um, from Aurora to to um, Poro Point in La Union, so that will be will be live in probably by next month. Then um, the Luzon um, connection from the north, uh, from Ilocos down to Quezon City, uh, we're projecting that by the end of the year uh, that should also be live. That provides about two terabits of um, of uh, capacity. Um, uh, to, to our current uh, capacity. In the meantime, uh, with our deployment um, on the free Wi-Fi, what, what's good is today we have more options. Uh, in the past, uh, connecting the remote islands and the remote uh, mountainous uh, communities have been rather difficult because most of the modalities uh, that would be required to, to provide the digital transport is um, expensive and it requires uh, the construction of uh, either towers, uh, which could be um, affected by adverse weather, or submarine cables to connect the remote islands. And, uh, but today, uh, with satellite technology, um, the cost of satellite technology coming down significantly, and the quality going up, uh, uh, we now have more options in our deployment. Uh, to the remote areas, or what we call the GIDA areas, the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. So, uh, because of the wider options of technology that's available, and because of um, policy and regulatory changes that we've implemented, uh, we do look forward to an increased um, um, ability to be able to deploy this connectivity at a much lower cost and at a much better reliability and quality across all our islands. And uh, one of those that we're prioritizing, of course, is the Department of Tourism's uh, tourism areas that uh, have been identified early on. So uh, we're working with the uh, Department of Tourism as well as, of course, Department of Transportation to identify the ports and the areas where uh, there will be a need to improve uh, digital connectivity 
especially for our um, tourism areas, visitors coming in. Uh, our airports, seaports, and terminals, uh, transport terminals. Thank you, Daphne. Okay, thank you, Secretary Uy. Uh, Secretary Bautista, one of the efforts of the DOTR in addressing transport-related problems is through the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program. What progress have we achieved so far in this field? The Public Utility Modernization Program uh, started in 2017 during the time of uh, President Duterte. No? And there are uh, four major uh, components of uh, the PUB Modernization Program. One is uh, the industry consolidation, uh, which uh, we are now implementing. You know? uh, under the uh, Omnibus Franchising Guideline, we want uh, the operators, uh, the jeepney drivers, to join cooperatives. No? Uh, it is important that uh, they join a cooperative or a corporation so that uh, they can work together, not compete with each other, uh, and at the same time, uh, they can operate as if they are a uh, legitimate business no? by uh, employing uh, professional mechanics who will maintain their vehicles. No? Uh, they will have the right uh, dispatching of vehicles so that uh, uh, there is uh, timely uh, available uh, vehicles uh, in uh, different stations. Uh, right now, <coughs> uh, the consolidation is uh, around almost 70%. No? Uh, there are uh, uh, more consolidation uh, happening in... Uh, Visayas and Mindanao. No? Uh, we are uh, working with the Office of the Transport Cooperative to uh, continue to encourage uh, those who have not consolidated to consolidate uh, because uh, the deadline for consolidation is uh, December 31 of this year. No? Uh, another uh, component of uh, the PUB modernization program is the route management. No? Uh, uh, we are working with uh, local government uh, in preparing the uh, what we call a local transport route plan. Uh, in terms of uh, this preparation, uh, we have already uh, uh, attained almost 60% uh, from uh, the local government units. No? Uh, another component is the fleet modernization program. No? Uh, this is a very contentious issue right now. Uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, this uh, small uh, group is uh, declaring Tigil Pasada uh, yesterday uh, and uh, until uh, today, but I understand that uh, they will not continue it anymore. No? Because uh, this group uh, don't uh, want the uh, old jeepneys uh, uh, to uh, to be replaced by uh, the modern jeepney. They, they, they want to keep the iconic jeepneys. No? And uh, we told them that uh, it is okay to keep the iconic jeepney as long as uh, these are roadworthy and uh, uh, they can still provide uh, convenient uh, and safe uh, transport uh, experience to our passengers. No? But uh, we're working with them. Uh, uh, we will uh, allow replacement of this uh, iconic jeepneys with uh, almost the same uh, type, but uh, conforming to Philippine national standards. No? Uh, the Philippine national standard require that uh, uh, the door is on the right side with uh, comfortable seats, uh, with uh, more uh, fuel efficient uh, engine, no? Euro 4 or Euro 5 engine, or electric vehicles. No? Uh, right now, uh, out of uh, around 180,000 uh, uh, jeepneys in the Philippines, uh, there are only around 7,000 modernized uh, equipment. No? So it will take some time uh, for the industry to be able to implement the modernization, the fleet modernization program. Uh, but government is uh, helping the, uh, the transport sector by providing uh, equity subsidy. No? Uh, we have given equity subsidies to 
the, all those who have modernized uh, their uh, their vehicles no? uh, and uh, we are looking at the possibility of uh, increasing the subsidy no? so we'll ask for uh, more budget so that uh, we can implement the fleet modernization program no? another uh, important uh, component of the uh, public utility uh, modernization program is the social uh, the social impact on uh, those who will be affected. No? So uh, we're working with uh, TESDA and uh, with the Department of Labor uh, to give them uh, training so that uh, those uh, who will not be uh, driving their jeepneys anymore will have uh, options, will have uh, the right training for them to be able to, to earn uh, a different <coughs> living. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary Bautista, for all the updates regarding the jeepney, motor jeepney modernization program. Okay, back to Department of Energy. Aside from ensuring sufficient energy supply and a healthy energy mix, the need to improve and expand the country's energy transmission system is critical to ensure the efficient delivery of power. Noting the delays in the implementation of key transmission projects, what is the status of the performance audit of the NGCP? Thank you, Daph. The, uh, as the President has mentioned, the uh, uh, audit, the comprehensive uh, review of the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines as the private concessionaire of our transmission system is ongoing. And with the Energy Regulatory Commission, the Department of Energy is set to start this soonest. The importance of uh, speeding this up is obvious because for the last 14 years that the NGCP has had a franchise for the transmission system, the Energy Regulatory Commission has reported that the, the length of the transmission system in the Philippines has increased only by 8% in terms of circuit kilometers. And that uh, pre-pandemic, the average increase has only been 1.05%. And <clears throat> the, the delays have uh, even exceeded eight years in some projects. Therefore, there is a need to speed this up because the country can't wait for eight to ten years for a project to be, to be finished. And the, we, we want to be forward-looking here and clarify what is the exact uh, nature of the problem? What are the obstacles that are facing us so that we can work on them? If the obstacle is one of financing or inability or uh, difficulties of the, of the country's biggest, uh, biggest uh, monopoly uh, to carry out, then let's find uh, alternative ways of uh, rolling out the uh, transmission, uh, transmission construction in the country. So this is what we uh, look forward uh, to, to do, not simply to to uh, find fault, but precisely to find the appropriate solutions for what the country faces. Okay, thank you, Secretary Lotilia. Um, Department of Tourism, we note that among the DOT's flagship projects is the establishment of tourist rest areas nationwide for the tourist convenience. Secretary Garcia Frasco, please provide details about this program. At the start of the Marcos administration, the instruction of the president was to ensure that we enhance the overall tourist experience, whether it's for international or domestic tourists. In line with this, we also conducted listening tours across our regions, and the demand was clear. We need a convenient place for our tourists to stop over from one destination to another, and most importantly, clean and decent public restrooms. So important is this priority that even the ASEAN has come up with public toilet awards 
for countries recognizing that this basic human need must be addressed when traveling, as it is not just the destination but also the journey. In line with that, we wasted no time and uh, broke ground right away on uh, 10 tourist rest areas across the country, namely in Pagudpud, Ilocos Norte, in Baguio City, several in Cebu, in Bohol, in Manolo Fortich in Bukidnon, as well as in Samal Island in Davao. We have already inaugurated one in Cebu and will be inaugurating several more this month and in the coming months. We are also breaking ground on 15 other tourist rest areas across Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. These tourist rest areas have a convenient lounge for our travelers, a Pasalubong Center to help our small and medium enterprises sell their local goods as well as the artisanal products of our local communities. It also has, of course, restrooms, uh, PWD facilities, and even a breastfeeding room for our mothers traveling with their uh, babies. In addition to this, uh, this TRA has been implemented in partnership with our infrastructure arm, the TIEZA, as well as our local government units all over the country. Tourist convenience is among the top priorities of the Marcos administration. And that is why, in line with that, we have also come up with another flagship project of the Marcos administration, and that is the very first Philippines hop-on, hop-off bus tours here in Metro Manila. This brings the Philippines shoulder to shoulder with other major key cities around the world that have hop-on, hop-off bus tours. At the convenience of your uh, fingertips, you can download an application for Philippines hop-on, hop-off and uh, purchase your ticket and be able to go around the various beautiful destinations of key cities in Metro Manila. We've launched so far in the city of Makati as well as in the city of Manila and launching soon in other cities in the metro. We hope to be able to benchmark this as well in other key cities in the country. Thank you so much, Secretary Garcia Frasco. And maraming salamat po sa ating mga panelists, mapaland, water or air transportation, housing, energy or internet, ang infrastructure development and connectivity cluster ng ating pamahalaan ay patuloy na nagtutulungan para sa maunlad at progresibong bagong Pilipinas. And in just a short while, we will have our food and food security cluster. Please do join us here in Facebook via Radio Television Malacanang and other agencies of the Presidential Communications Office. This has been Daphne Osenia Paez. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in the 2023 Post-SONA Discussions.